Hi, I'm Dr. Gary Richter and welcome to Ultimate Pet Vet. Today we're talking about a, a really interesting topic. Uh, the, the topic is leashes and collars and what's good, what's not so good, what's appropriate for your dog. Uh, you know, there really is no absolute right or wrong answer as it pertains to, you know, what kind of collar, what kind of leash, what kind of harness uh, is appropriate for all animals. A lot of it really has to do with uh, you know, the size of the dog, the breed of the dog, uh, whether or not they have any medical related issues. Um, and also a lot of it has to do with sort of their, their behavior and their training. Uh, so, you know, to start with the question of collar versus harness, you know, there, there are definitely, definitely benefits and drawbacks, uh, to both. So, when we think of a collar, uh, you know, pretty much anything that just, just goes around the neck and presumably the, the leash would clip onto there. Um, you know, the upsides there are, you know, clearly they're, they're easy. Um, you know, so it's, it's an easy thing to take on and off. Um, the dogs don't, generally speaking, mind wearing a collar. Uh, the problem is that, you know, particularly if you have a dog that has a tendency to want to pull when they're, on, when they're on a walk, them pulling on a collar puts a lot of strain on their neck um, and over time can potentially cause injury to their neck. Uh, so that's something that, you know, you definitely really want to be very careful about. Now, sometimes that's really just a function of appropriate training and teaching the dog not to pull, um, teaching them to heal. Um, however, you know, in the process of while you're getting that done, uh, you need to really sort of think, uh, think about whether or not a collar is an appropriate, uh, thing to use for your dog. Now, there are certainly different types of collars. Um, there's regular collars. There's what's called a prong collar, uh, which means that, uh, you know, if the dog pulls, it kind of, it kind of pinches, uh, into their neck a little bit, not enough to hurt them. Uh, but the hope is, is that it discourages them from pulling. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't. Again, it's a, uh, again, it's a training, uh, sort of, sort of tool. Um, there's also something called a martingale collar, uh, which is, uh, which is designed to put less pressure on the neck, uh, which works out, uh, nicely for a lot of dogs. But again, uh, you know, if the dog has a real tendency to pull, uh, you know, this may not really be the solution either, uh, that, that becomes, uh, an important training type issue. Now, conversely harnesses, the big plus here is that if your dog is pulling and they're attached to a harness, you know, the weight and the, the pressure is distributed across their chest and, and it doesn't, and it doesn't cause that potential injury to the neck. Um, the hang up there is, is if they're pulling and they're on a harness, there is, there is very little to discourage your dog from continuing to pull because it's not uncomfortable. It, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really cause them any problems to keep on pulling. And before you know it, they're just dragging you on down the street. Um, now they do make some, uh, some harnesses that are specifically designed, uh, to kind of help with that. There are certain harnesses, um, that they clip in the front, uh, rather than over the back. And when the dog pulls, what it does is it tends to squeeze their shoulders a little bit. And it also, uh, because of the way the, the leash clips on, it tends to sort of pull the dog off to the side of whatever side of the dog you happen to be standing on. So, so what it does is it trains the dog that if they try and pull, they don't actually wind up getting to go in the direction that they want to go. They wind up getting deviated off in a direction they don't want to go. And the, and the, the hope there is that they will learn over time that trying to pull forward is, 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 is not a behavior that, that they get rewarded for. Uh, you know, so that's something, uh, that can be very beneficial as well. Um, you know, so, you know, th these are sort of the, you know, the, the pros and cons of, of, of collars versus harnesses. There are many, many different styles of collars and harnesses out there. Um, and particularly if you have a dog that has a tendency to pull when you're, when you're walking, uh, when you're walking the dog, this is a really good time to, you know, either educate yourself about training, uh, or to speak with a trainer to figure out what is going to be the best method of preventing that from happening and what is going to be the, um, you know, the best type of collar or harness, uh, to use. Uh, now the, the, the flip side of this conversation is leashes. Uh, so what do you attach to that, to that collar or that harness? So realistically speaking, there's only a, there's, there's only a couple of kinds of leashes. There's sort of just your standard leash. Um, and there's also what, uh, what are called flexi leads. These are these like retractable, uh, leashes, uh, retractable leashes 
There's a lot of convenience there um, because that way, again, you know, if your dog wants to go in some direction, they're not kind of yanking your arm out of your socket to do that. Um, the problem is, is again, if you have a dog that has a real tendency to pull or they don't, they don't sort of mind you when they're out on a walk, um, it can give them too much freedom uh, and, then, and then you've lost control of the dog, so to speak. So flexi leads are really great for dogs that are, that are very well behaved on a walk, that they can kind of saunter around and not be as directly tied to you, that they can kind of just do whatever they want to do, as long as they understand that they have to stay within a certain perimeter of where you are. Um, if you have one of these dogs that, that, you know, their training is not complete yet, and they're really trying to get farther than you want them to get, then a, a flexi lead can be a little bit problematic in that sense and you may be better off with a, a more conventional type of a leash. Um, so that's really kind of the basics of leashes and collars. Uh, like I say, I would recommend that if you have any, any issues or concerns about, about the dog pulling or, or, or any other kind of behavioral type issues that are involved with, with a walk, uh, it's always a good idea to do some research and speak with a trainer about what the appropriate equipment would be uh, to, uh, to make things as safe and effective for your dog and to, and to make things safe for you as well while you're out taking them for a walk. My name is Dr. Gary Richter. Thanks so much for joining us today.